up on the blitz another week of hotly contested games coming at you our game of the week pits hartfield academy and jackson prep both teams fighting for a potential bye week for the playoffs see who got the crucial w and there was one game in the metro that went into not one not two but three overtimes and there was a walk-off game winner that's the kind of night it was play making at the most important time of the year if you want to see the big catches get you out of your seat plays powering the playoff push for your team you know what it is it's time for the blitz the best of high school football mama justice presents blitz 16 on jackson 16 wapt all right and welcome back to another edition of the blitz week nine of the blitz we have a good one for you tonight as playoff football is on the horizon so a lot of competitive games down the stretch here yeah, that's right, Joe. Couldn't say it any better myself because our first matchup is between Jackson Prep and Hartfield Academy, two one-loss teams, yeah. which means tonight was a battle for the first round bye. Let's head to the highlights where both squads were back and forth in the first half. The Patriots, they would face a fourth down in the first quarter. Check out the clutch grab by Peyton Puckett. That sets up Prep in the red zone looking for the early lead. And on third down, QB Paxton Thompson it's going to give it to him up the middle for the score, 7-0 Patriots. And now Hartfield looking to respond on its next possession. Trip Maxwell loads up inside his own 30, and he's going to hit Gage Sori in stride. Quick strike, knots things at 7. But how about Thompson coming off an AC joint sprain? Well, he ain't cooling off, breaking tackles and making cuts all the way to the end zone to put Prep back in front. 14 to 7 was that halftime score. Joe, tell us how this one finished. Well, thank you, Bradley Brett. Oh, Brett. <laughs> Sorry, Jackson Prep extended their lead to 20 to 13 late in the fourth quarter. But here comes Hartfield. Maxwell finding freshman Braylon Womack down the near sideline for the first down to stop the clock with under two minutes left. So just one play later, Maxwell, he's going to roll out left, throws across his body to the end zone and a beautiful throw over the defenders. Blake Condon behind the defense. He scores, so hold on. This one's not over yet. The Hawks down, uh, make it a nine point game. Try to go for the two point conversion, but no good. Maxwell gets pressure to a tough throw and the pass is broken up by Duncan Matthews to keep it a two score game. And here's the icer. Cole Gideon recovers the onside for prep and the Patriots will kneel and get the win. They get a close one and they uh, clinch the last playoff by as they win it 28 to 19. Head coach Doug Goodwin praised both his team and the starting quarterback for how he battled through injury after the game. He's a little warrior, you know. He uh, he didn't get much practice during the week, but he showed up tonight and, uh, you know, he's a leader of our offense and one of the leaders of our team. I'm really proud of him. I think they did a great job, you know. We, like I told you the other day, we expected a close game and a, a four-quarter game. That's what we got. All right, the Patriots finish out the season uh, next week on the road. And uh, before getting a little break before the playoffs, and you're going to see uh, the final score one more time, 28-19. Prep is victorious. The Patriots move into second place. They'll face PCS next week. Hartfield, they will play MRA next week. All right, this next game was definitely game of the week worthy for this matchup alone. Oh, yeah. Uh, Vicksburg at home taking on Neshoba Central. Yeah, what a great slate we had this week, Joe. Both teams came in undefeated in Region 5A, Region 2, that is. So the winner of this game clinches the top spot in District 2. How about about that let's head out to Vicksburg's field James E Sturgis both teams are coming off a six game winning streak after losing the first two regular season games so even more got parallels between these two teams picking it up in the first quarter quarterback Ronnie Leroy Alexander rolls out but his pass is gonna be intercepted looking downfield picked off by Rockets defender Silas Massey He's going to return it for a good gain. Now would be the Rockets' turn to try to get something going on offense, but quarterback Will Williams, he's going to hand it off to Makai Gaddis and gets dropped by the big boy Gator number 45, Caleb Bryant. Now let's head over to the second quarter. Alexander again hands the ball off to running back Johnny Smith. He's got a big gain all the way down the sideline. Finally gets dragged down inside the red zone. Set up his running mate Malik Montgomery. Check this out. Stiff arms his own guy into the defender, into the end zone, touchdown. And Vicksburg, they win the defensive battle over Neshoba Central, 14 to nothing. And you know what that means? The Gators win 5A Region 2 title and their third, and their third title in that region under head coach Todd McDaniel. Now in Clinton, they're crowning a queen. Now the action starts and it's gonna be Clinton's Jordan 
Beatty. Wait for it here. We're going to actually get a longer shot at the queen. That's a nice looking crown, actually. Now, here's Jordan Beatty. But it's going to be picked off by the Grenada's defender, Jacarius Williams. Later, Clinton would try a field goal, but it's going to be blocked. That's no good. Comes up short. And Grenada, they have their back against the end zone now. And they're going to take a safety. You don't see that every day. Made it 9-6, Clinton. And Clinton would make three points on this kick to make it 12-6. And that would be the final score, folks. Low scoring one. The arrows prevail in a defensive battle. Right, now we've switched to an important 6A Region 2 battle between Germantown and the Mavericks. Uh, a lot of teams are a game within each other, so a win could be critical for playoff seeding as the Mavs taking on Madison Central. So we go to the jungle where Russell Mitchell and the Germantown Mavs were visiting Toby Collins and the defending state champs, Madison Central. And check out this play from the Mavs. Jackson Hood with an under-the-hood scoop pass, if you will, to David Gainwell. He gets enough yards for a first down to keep the drive moving, but the Jacks put it into that. Hood going back to pass, going deep, but Denham Mitchell flies in and grabs the ball for a nice interception. MC up 14 and nothing, looking for more after the takeaway, Jake Norris going up to Isaiah Spencer. He makes a filthy one-handed catch for a first down. And that was set up Norris in the big bruiser, versatile weapon. He's like Madison Central, Madison Central's Taysom Hill. He scores, making it 21 at the Jacks. That's all Madison Central needed. They end their two-game skid with a big 35-2-6 win. All right, let's head, over to, let's head over to Warren Central High School and right at uh, Robert Morgan Field as the Vikings taking on the Bulldogs to Terry High School. The Vikings were up 21 nothing at halftime, picking this up in the third quarter. And the Vikings quarterback Jack Wright passed the ball to receiver Zach Evans who makes a big catch in Bulldogs territory. He takes a tough hit there and that's up a rushing touchdown. So all the Vikings human highlight reel Trey Hall and uh, he gets the touchdown and he wasn't done, ladies and gentlemen. He had a big night tonight. Uh, the Vikings will be back on the attack, and Jake Wright, he's going to dump the ball to number one, and Trey Hall, he's going to, you're going to, you're going to see this later tonight, gets the catch, gets a block, makes a cut, and he is gone. That is a touchdown. Warren Central wins big over Terry, 35-0, and they improve to 7-1 on the year. All right, stick around because we got so much more on the way. We'll see what the MAIS teams have in store for us. More coming up next on The Blitz. Well, 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 well.